Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Today, November the 7th, we're going to talk about Ukraine. We're going to talk about Vladimir Zelensky. We will make some references to the Trump election, uh, Vladimir Putin, the European Union, and others. But the reality is war is continuing to rage down on Ukraine. We know that there will be many transitions in place, specifically talking about United States support. But as I cautioned all of you, please be patient. Additionally, I can tell you for pro-Ukrainian YouTubers, the assault has been crazy with bots. Myself has included, been included in that. Professor Gerdish, uh, I've talked to Rick, uh, there's Vlad Vexler, there's others. We've all experienced an attack. So for me, that's good news. We're pushing out positive information. We're pushing out information to not only help Ukraine, but to help you. Whatever country you're from, for me, I'm an American and I love my country, and I support Ukraine. So, guys, today I'm going to give you the next steps of update in regard to what is happening in Ukraine. And this update will be based on the internal things of Ukraine, not the external things of the United States or even Russia. We're going to look at Ukraine. So let's jump into that and get going. I can tell you right now that strikes are continuing throughout Ukraine massively. Uh, the latest numbers we have right now is in Zaporizhia city, and there's a couple of pictures behind me there of Zaporizhia. Four were killed, 18 have been wounded, including many children. Kiev under assault, being struck with thermobaric Shahids, of course, we have confirmed that over the last week or so, and those are much more dangerous. You know, in Ukraine, they will tell you if there's an air alarm and you can't get to the bunker, you live in a tall building, get into the internal hallway, we have at least two walls between you and the windows. Very important. But now with these thermobaric uh, munitions on these Shahids, even that is much more different, difficult because when they hit, they just burn. There have been many strikes, cab bombs, flying glide bombs, um, Shahids, S-300 strikes in Donetsk regional cities, Kharkiv, and Kherson. But the two major strikes over the last few hours, to be quite honest, is Zaporizhia and Kiev. The strike in Zaporizhia today that wreaked so much havoc was actually a daytime sh strike, which for the most part are a little bit unusual. Usually these strikes are happening under the cover of darkness. In fact, here's a little bit of a video for you. I'm going to show you first eight or nine seconds of what it looks like at the strike at one of the strike areas. I'm sorry, multiple strike areas in Zaporizhia. And then I translated the video of a gentleman talking about rescuing his family and how the strike happened. And I can confirm for you that there were no fatalities in his family. This man saved his family's life, and my friends, that's a good story. Here's Zaporizhia. It's a result of glide bombs. And here is the interview with the gentleman talking about his family. I was moving the wheels when suddenly this thing flew in. It went behind the house and the roof collapsed on me. My wife and kid were inside. I dug out the child first. Then others came to help. They rescued my wife. They took someone to the hospital. Not sure, but he was out cold, mumbling something incoherently. So there you can have it, guys. That's the reality that continues. You know, the world is focused on the election. Donald Trump, the world's focused on so many things right now. But I'm here to tell you that war is not only raging in Ukraine, but Russia. We're hearing information as of this video I'm recording where a pretty massive built-up is on the southern side of Zaporizhia City down there, including pushing back eastward uh, towards Pokrovsk and even further eastward to, towards Karakova. I may do another video or live on that. I'm getting information on that all afternoon here in the United States. Accurate information coming in directly from Ukraine. So we shall see, but... Keep that in your mind today. No matter what you're doing or experiencing in this November season, here in the United States, it's autumn. It's very, very difficult there in Ukraine today. Uh, now, in the live yesterday, I had some questions. So, Greg, what does this mean about Poland? If, if you know this administration changes to Donald Trump and we've heard all this 
Poland has been the best ally, and then we had problems at the Polish border during the war, et cetera, et cetera. What about Poland? Well, I can tell you today, the Polish Minister of Defense, his name is Vladislav Kosiniak Kamush, he spoke out, meaning against the transfer of MiG-29 fighters to Ukraine. Patience, everybody. Please, patience. Why? Because they are necessary for the protection of Polish skies. Why? We do not know what will happen next on the global stage. My dear friends, do not, please, I ask you, look at that as a negative. Remember, I always encourage you that this war with Russia is a chess game. Russia always trying to think ahead, and I understand this many people being killed every day, the meat grinder, North Koreans are rolling, etc., etc., but they try to think ahead. Now, Europe, Poland here specifically, thinking ahead. Hmm, if supplies stop, if America goes a different way, if there is a potential uh, attempt to force a freeze, which uh, Ukraine will not do, we better have some MiG-29s for our own skies. So, my friends, I do not take this as a negative against Ukraine not receiving some MiG-29s currently from Poland. I take this as a positive as Europe is now thinking ahead, maybe even to a different level post-election of Donald Trump, as we may have real war on our doorstep as well, and we have to be looking ahead. For me, good news on that. And there you have the update on Poland. Now, guys... Dmitry Kaleba, he is not the foreign minister, he is the former foreign minister of Ukraine. I've always been a massive Dmitry Kaleba uh, supporter. He came out today with a statement advising the world, advising Ukrainians, advising Europeans, patience. Patience on your rhetoric. Do not get the cart ahead of the horse. Do not assume anything. You know, my grandmother... A uh, devout Christian lady, she taught me, she says, Greg, I will tell you this, don't assume anything because assuming will make an ass out of you and me. A-S-S-U-M-E is how you spell assume. So that is always stuck in my mind. And Kaleba coming out and saying, don't assume anything. There will be many super annoying statements and steps from Trump that will force us to reach for Corvallol. You may say, well, okay, can you translate that for me, Corvallol? Sure. Tylenol, medicine, headache medicine. Former head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dmitry Kaleba. But this is what he responded by saying, Ukraine will outlive everyone. But for this, it is necessary to do very hard work inside the state right now. I remind you guys that Ukraine is not a small Baltic nation like Estonia. And with all due respect to our Estonian friends, Ukraine is about the size of Texas. They have been building their internal uh, military complex. They are producing a lot of their own supplies. They've even talked about exporting weapons. You know, having that type of ability, the Ukrainians are geniuses when it comes to technical ability and technical skills and production. Um, so there are a lot of things happening here. And as Kaleba is saying right now, please, patience on the rhetoric. Now, Vladimir Zelensky speaking at the European Political Summit. And as I have always encouraged you guys to do, listen to Vladimir Zelensky. He is the one that was here meeting at the United Nations. He is the one that met with um, presidential candidate at that time, Kamala Harris. He is the one that was meeting with presidential candidate and now president-elect Donald J. Trump at that time. Came out of that very positive. We heard from both him and Andrei Yermak that there is positives. Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. Guys, please do not assume. Ukraine is going to win this war. We're going to stand against the evil aggression of the dictator Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. They're playing their cards. Their alliance with North Korea, their alliance with Xi Jinping, their alliance with Iran, the way Russia is trying to destabilize the entire world, the world is aware of it. We're not going to negotiate our way out of this. They are going to be defeated. Zelensky saying today, the concept of peace through strength has proven itself and is needed now, as he was addressing the European political community there. 
some more things Zelensky said. Russia started this war because they desire global power, starting with control over Ukraine and then coming to Europe. I remind you, this speech made at the European Political Summit, European heads of states and key leaders were there. In fact, at the end of this, I even have a comment coming out of Belgium for the uh, lady who is running to be the, 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 the leader there of the European Parliament. Um, her, I'll, I'll have her name in a second. It's Marta. Marta... Kos, Marta Kos, you'll see that in just a minute. Um, and then Zelensky said, the bill for this war should be sent to the Russia, not Ukraine. What a great concept. You know, many times, especially here in the United States, we hear talks, the bills, the bills, the money, the money. I was at a meeting last night with some business owners. I'm doing that right now as I travel, educating about Ukraine. A lot of things you do not see on video because I'm not allowed to show it or I choose not to show it on video if these people don't have probable provisions to do that, but educating these people about Ukraine. And they say, well, Greg, the bills, the bills, the money that's been sent, and I explained to them how much money and aid has actually been, been sent to Ukraine versus how much money has been invested into the United States military industrial complexes being pushed into our economy and it's like a light bulb goes off well they they asked me well why is that never on the news i said because nothing is on the news listen to us we will do our best to share the truth will we always be right of course not but we will always do our best and if we're wrong we'll fix it but i can tell you Zelensky here perfectly and spot on the bill for this war should be sent to russia not ukraine hello they're the ones that are coming in, invading, and leveling Ukraine to the ground meter by meter. They should pay for it. 100% agree. Zelensky goes on today at his speech to say, Russia still profits from selling oil, enough to continue its war. They evade sanctions and they buy drone and missile components worldwide. 100% agree. It's a fact. We've talked about that over the last week or so. Russia still spreads instability in places like Israel, Africa, and the entire Middle East. And Zelensky specifically spoke about a country like Yemen. Folks, I have proven and shown you over the last few weeks, Russian supplies that are in Hamas and Hezbollah storages, the exchange of, of weapons and technology that runs between Iranian proxy groups like Hezbollah and Hamas, the Houthis down in Yemen, fully engaged and supplied by the Russian military machine. There is a big, big play at hand. We then go into Africa and the Chinese uh, Russian partnership there to devastate that continent, and they are being very successful in doing it. This is what Zelensky is saying. This is much bigger than just the war that is in our country. Zelensky continues, we need leverage over Putin. Europe needs it. Together, we can stop Russia's war and respond to other challenges. Really appreciated this as Zelensky speaking directly to European leaders, allying Ukraine with Europe, allying Ukraine with these great European nations that have so strongly supported Ukraine. He said, this is possible for Europe. He does make a jab here. Not for any one leader alone. Of course, that being a reference to Donald Trump, who thinks that somehow he can end the war in 24 hours and after being elected. And by the way, as I told you, we will just analyze the 24 hours are over for that first call and ending the war within 24 hours. I told you, just be patient. Be patient. Don't listen to the rhetoric. Right now, Ukraine, a tough situation, but we're standing strong. He says, this is possible for Europe, not for any one leader alone. Stand together in defending our common interest and let us work together with our allies for our shared interest. Zelensky stating that to conclude his speech. Finally, and then I want to show you the uh, European Parliament statement from Marta Kaz. Zelensky said, 
And this is a direct statement to Donald Trump. Making concessions to Russia is unacceptable for Ukraine and suicidal for all of Europe. Let me repeat this. Remember, step by step, do not listen just to Twitter and talking heads and media. Listen to the people who are on the inside, like the president of Ukraine. Really good source here. Making concessions to Russia is unacceptable for Ukraine and suicidal for all of Europe. Guys, if you want to know Ukraine's viewpoint on any of the rumors you're hearing, the projections you're hearing, put it in the back of the filing cabinet. This is Ukrainians' viewpoint. And I will tell you, Europe is standing strong. And I trust and believe that America will stand strong as well. In fact, here is Marta Koss, EU Parliament speaking. Really encouraging words here. Dear Ukrainians, the EU supports you not out of fear or necessity, but from a deep sense of shared destiny. Supporting you, I will say it in English, there is no translation. By supporting you, we're not just showing solidarity, we're proving our strength. By supporting you, we're not just showing our solidarity, we are showing our strength. Remember how I started this update today. We win the war, Zelensky said, by showing strength. Friends, they're getting it. They get it. Be patient. As Kaleba said, don't listen to the rhetoric. Maybe you'll get a headache from some of it. Go take a Tylenol, but stand strong. So guys, that's where we're at today. I want to thank all of you for being here. And as I said at the beginning, pro-Ukrainian YouTubers are under assault right now, but I received some wonderful messages from other YouTubers, and we were talking on the backside. We call each other. We're friends. You guys know that. We're all one big family standing and supporting Ukraine. It's just so interesting. We were all just getting smashed, and so many of you wrote positive comments, and I saw them. I read them. I responded to some of them where you said, don't worry about it. If people jump ship, they were not supposed to be here anyway. Let's build this coalition stronger. Let's build this team stronger. And you know what? Take it as a compliment that you had enough voice on media to have bots hitting after you and people that want to take you down. So thank you for that. But we're not going anywhere. We're standing here until victory. You guys be blessed. Thank you. Here's some of our team here. Thank you for your support. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Liking this video, please drop a message in the comments. Additionally, join our Discord. That place is awesome. Link is in the description. And as always, I always give thanks to my moderator team, whether it's a live or a video that drops. Those guys do an amazing job. Be blessed and have a great day afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you may be in the world. Bye-bye.